finally, the wait is over. The ultimate ice bridge maker, the first of its kind cryo catalyst, and a destined contender for Frostbearer, Risley, is here. And in this video, we'll take a look at his C0 free to play damage potential, best builds, weapons, and teams, and I'll also share my honest thoughts about some of his cons and pros. So if you want to know how strong he is, if he's worth pulling for, and how to build them, this video will cover all of it. First, I want to show you various ways you can output damage, and I'll be using the newest Flowing Purity craftable weapon, although the event-exclusive Ballad of the Boundless Blue also works for free-to-play purposes, and then obviously, he will be equipped with the Hunter 4 set, while his talents are at level 10 and he is Constellation 0. So, on a surface level, Risley has a pretty simple playstyle. His normal attacks consisting of 5-hit combo deal just what you would expect, nothing impressive, but then they become a lot stronger when he activates his skill. The multiplier is literally multiplying the damage, and then he also has a burst, which is extremely similar to Wanderer's. Here, you can see him doing a full combo of normal attacks when his skill is active, then after a few more hits, there's a charge attack, followed by a burst. The normal attacks while the skill is active range from 10 to 19k damage, the charge attack deals deals about 22k damage, and then the burst, which costs 60 energy, deals roughly 13,000 damage 5 times. And so, with this free-to-play build and in about 10 seconds, Risley dishes out roughly 274,000 damage when using Flowing Purity. Now, I need to break down a little how this damage works, because I did it in a way that he also utilizes both of his passives. The second one gives him 6% attack boost each time his HP changes, which can go up to 30% attack. And the main way his HP fluctuates is thanks to his skill. If he is above 50% HP, he gains the multiplier for his normal attack, and then also loses 4% HP. So you could say both his passive and skill work hand in hand. But keep in mind, he could also just get healed and obtain the second passive stack. Also, if he is below 50% HP, then the skill won't enhance his normal attacks, which I'll talk about this later why it might be a problem. On the other hand, the first passive powers up his charge attack, but only when he is below 60% HP. So, use his skill, deal damage with normal attacks, and drop below that threshold, right? Yeah, and then do the charge attack, and it will gain 50% damage boost, consume no stamina, and also heal him for 30% HP. And all of this has a 5 second cooldown. The thing is, if you look here, the charge hit actually gains about 30% damage increase, so it's not an actual multiplier unlike his skill for normal attacks. But in a nutshell, that's how his playstyle looks like. He is a normal attack damage dealer who borrows inspiration from Hazel and Wanderer, he loses health with each enhanced normal attack as long as he is above 50% health, and he can use his charge attack to heal himself, while the burst can be a nice and quick way to dish out some front loaded damage. Now this was just him dealing damage without any buffs, and I think we can all agree it's more interesting to see how much more beefy he becomes with other supports. And so let's take a look at the damage comparisons with many different buffs. But first, thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video, which is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. Collect and play with over 2,000 tanks, ships, helicopters, and planes in dynamic large-scale PvP battles. Now, I mainly collect cute anime characters, but I gotta say, every vehicle feels incredibly detailed because they are modeled down to their individual parts, so I really do feel like I'm getting an immersive combat experience. And this collection of vehicles spans over 100 years of development, ranging from 1920s to the present day. This includes exotic vehicles like the AH-1S Kisarazu helicopter of the GSDF, which uses an anime-style camouflage in real life. But what's even better, there's an in-depth customization system. So you can apply countless options, from skins to 3D decorations, like the exclusive Ducky Makuras that you can get if you follow my link. But what I personally love as a collector is the insane amount of vehicles I can obtain. Like take a break anime gacha games, I'm here for the tanks and ships. So make sure to download War Thunder now for free by using my link in the description. It's available on PC, PlayStation and Xbox. And if you're a new player or haven't played at least for 6 months, you can claim the body pillow pack by using my link. This pack contains multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, your new favorite Daki Makuda, and so much more, but it's only available for a limited time. So download War Thunder now. So, I've got a bunch of supports waiting to boost our brooding Risley, and to start it off, let's take a look at his melt damage. Using the classic lineup of Benny, Shangling, and Kazuha, with a bit of tryharding, he can dish out some nice 93 and 96,000 charge attack melts. His burst also melts twice out of 5 hits, and the melted hits do roughly 49,000 damage. So, by spending 7 seconds on the field, he ends up dealing 540,000 damage in total. Compared to him without buffs, he deals almost double the damage, and in reality, it is more 
more than that because he spent less time with more front-loaded damage compared to 10 seconds it took him without buffs. But there are a lot of caveats when using him in Mel teams, especially with animal units like Kazuha. And I'll get into this later when showcasing his weapons and teams, and for now, the other buffing party is just good old Mono Cryo with Shenha. Here, it's super easy to take advantage of Kazuha's or Sucrose's buffs, which includes the Cryo VV Shred, and then of course, Shenha's massive damage gets added on top for the first 7 hits for Risley. This ends up boosting his normal attacks to upwards of 40,000 per hit. His charge attack can do around 60k, and his burst hits for 27,500 for 5 times. In just 6 seconds, he ends up dealing around half a million damage, which is pretty good, I'll admit it. This type of buffing definitely feels easier to pull off, but in exchange, you do need to have Shenha to enjoy this leisure. But then I thought, let's just throw in a lot of buffs from each character. Let's go with Benny's attack burst, Petra Zhongli's shield to shred resistance while boosting crowd damage, and even Yunjin resurfaces from the Dark Ages and provides a massive boost to Risley's normal attacks. I will admit it, this is a super fun way to enable your hyper carry because the damage of normal attacks ranges from 30 to almost 50k. Some of the hits even initially melt thanks to Benny's applied pyro aura, and even the burst delivers solid 24,000 per hit, and all of this results in roughly 680,000 damage over 10 seconds, which is about 2.5 times better than his personal damage without buffs. Indeed, buffs turn this guy into a pretty formidable damage dealer, but it does mean he has two differing playstyles, one of which involves melt or mono cryo supports that force him to specialize in front loading tons of damage within the first 6 or 8 seconds, while the other method is just staying on the field for the whole 10 second duration, which is the duration of his skills enhancement, and this allows him to deal sustained damage. Both of these playstyles have their strengths and weaknesses, and it will always depend on what type of buffers you will use with him, because the buff duration coming from these supports will dictate for how long he can actually become a beast. But with all these damaged numbers flying off with the flowing purity catalyst, one must wonder. The time to shine for the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful frost bear has finally come, right? Well, with a lot of excitement in my heart, I can tell you that it's almost shocking how frost bear still remains one of the worst catalysts. Seriously, even when affected by Cryo, the enemy still only gets damage for about 4000 with my free to play build, so if this Cryo Catalyst cannot make it work, then no one will, and I'll fully refine my Kokomi's Donut if it ever turns out that I'm wrong about this. But hey, I did bother to level up Frostbearer for this epic moment, so such a sacrifice means you will now press the like button on this video, okay? But yeah, from a pretty mid damage output with no buffs to a pretty cool damage output with buffs, Risley can do it all. However, now we need to talk about his builds, weapons and teams because, let me tell you, there's a lot of drama behind these funny numbers. So, when it comes to his build, it's pretty easy, not gonna lie. Hunter's set by far is the best one to go for, since he will easily lose some HP from a couple of enhanced normal attacks, but there is also Blizzard Strayer's set, which is the perfect choice for freeze comps or so you would think. Because his charge attack can shatter, oftentimes you won't gain that extra 20% crit rate from the force set, and not to mention, you also lose this bonus against bosses, since you cannot freeze them. So Hunter set by far remains the most comfortable choice, although you could also go for something like Shimanavas or double two sets, but hey, they are only here to stay temporarily as you work your way towards farming a decent Hunter set. Main stats are also pretty simple. Attack sands, crowd goblet, and crit rate or damage circlet. The only time it's worth going for an attack goblet would be when the supports are exclusively boosting anything besides his attack, but it's a really niche scenario. And I also recommend using Elemental Sense if you play him in melt teams. I mean, it's been 3 years now, stats are not that hard to understand. But when it comes to weapons, there are a lot of things we need to go over. First and foremost, his best in slot is Cashflow Supervision, which is a big surprise, right? Although, what is a bit surprising is that it doesn't skyrocket his damage like for other characters when it comes to the signature weapon. So while it is the best, it's certainly not a must-have. Next one that comes close to his signature is the Remembrance Catalyst. Really solid option for him if you don't use it on your Wanderer. Now honestly, other 5 star and 4 star options are all below these two catalysts, and their viability really depend on the situation. For melt teams, 1000 floating dreams is legit good on him. He can boost other teammate elemental mastery, while also enjoying a big boost to his own EM and elemental damage, thanks to the passive and substat. Eternal flow is also great for melt teams, but it does get better when his C1 is unlocked, so keep this in mind. If you're using shielders, Memory of Dust serves its purpose with a big boost from the passive, while the Lost Prayer of Sacred Winds remains a great option if you don't overcap his critical rate and you can go for a more sustained damage playstyle. 
I also really like Skyward Atlas in teams where you don't use Shenha or Benny. The massive attack increase means he can work super well in freeze teams, and it remains one of the premier choices if you don't have his signature. And the last of the 5 stars in this list would be Kagura's Verity. It's nothing more than just a glorified stat stick, but it does its job well if you got nothing better. And when it comes to 4 star weapons, Flowing Purity, as you've seen, can put out some really solid numbers, just as long as there's a healer in the team, because while he can self heal, it will be too late before he can gain the other half of the passive. Ballad of the Boundless Blue is another solid free-to-play option, especially if you want to utilize his burst off cooldown thanks to the energy recharge from the substat. And then there's Witsith, good old Witsith, and the gamble you must take in order to make it work. Truth be told, all three variations can be good for him in teams like Melt, but you obviously want either attack or elemental damage boost for the most part. Finally, there's Solar Pearl and Dodoko Tails. Both are worst case scenario weapons because of how Risley plays into the whole charge attack and normal attack playstyle. On paper, they might seem good, but in the team section I'll soon talk about, their passives are just not that great when you consider the uptime. Now there's a lot of characters I want to talk about and how they work with Risley. As always, take a look at the bottom of the screen to see the stats and loadout I'm using with him. So starting off with melt comps, honestly with an animal unit, they don't feel that good in Abyss. And the biggest problem has to do with animal units. Double swirling with Kazuha is really hard since Risley has no off-field crowd application, and the VV shred and buff duration from Kazuha can quickly run out before he can unleash all of his damage. Actually, often it will just end up with Kazuha boosting pyro teammates, while Risley can use Benny's buff. But then there's another problem. Because Benny heals so much, it will be very unlikely that you can actually trigger the first passive and hit with the enhanced charge attack, since unless the enemy hits him, he will not go below 60% HP that easily. It's not that big of a deal, but it does directly work against his kit. But with that being said, Burning Melt or Double Pyro Cryo Melt is where things get better. Now, it's far more easier to play a smoother playstyle. With Nahida in Burning Melt, she gives him a big EM boost, and if there's Zhongli, he can still shred enemies resistance and boost his damage with Petra Artifact Set. While in a team like Shangling, Benny Shenha, the buffs coming from Shenha actually allow him to trigger reverse melts in a decent way. Overall, I would say his melt comps are scuffed, but few of them work decent enough. On the other hand, Freeze teams are a blast to play with. It's just fun to punch everyone around for big damage, although he will shatter enemies with his charge attack, and the team will perform worse against bosses, but overall, it's one of the better comps to put him in, since this is also a comp where you can use Kokomi or Mona with Thrilling Tails to give him that extra oomph. However, the situation becomes better in Mono Cryo. It's a team made up of two premium units, which are Shenha and Kazuha, but both of them put in a ton of work to allow Risley to hit for big damage. And the biggest surprise here has to be Mika. Yes, the Chocobo Boy actually works well in this comp, because not only does he provide attack speed and off-field healing, but he can also generate cryo particles for the energy-hungry Shenha. And because Mika's off-healing isn't that amazing, it actually works out in favor for Risley, since he can go below 60% with a better guarantee and that actually allows him to use his enhanced charge attack. Talk about turn of events and Mika coming out on top for once. Another fun team I've discovered involves Double Cryo Double Geo with Yunjin, Zhongli, and Shenha. What I love about this comp is that both Yunjin and Shenha provide massive damage boosts to Risley's normal attacks. And this just really reminded me of the good old times of Cryo Zhongli, except this time he is a Petra holder. And the thing about shielders is that this guy does need them. His resistance to interruption is pretty weak, even if he does obtain some of it from the skill, but on the flip side, you can actually take out Zhongli and swap in Toma, another big turn of events. Toma, not Virgin Toma, but the real housekeeper we all know and love. I'm honestly amazed this guy can pull two characters out of the gutter and actually make use of them. And then finally, you couldn't even call this a team showcase without some denjo comps. The best one so far has to be Hyperfridge. In fact, I think it's the best version of Hyperfridge in the game right now. Thanks to the cryo application coming from Risley constantly, and in a team with Nahida, Shincho, and Cookie, blooms are generated more frequently, and even if he can shatter the enemies, most of them still remain frozen for a good chunk of time. And this team remains as a really solid option to go for if you just want to cheat the system with some bonkers damage coming from Hyper Blooms. Heck, you can even go for something like Yao Yao or Baiju instead if you don't have Nahida. For the most part, I see a lot of exciting teams that you can play with this guy, while at the same time, some of them are a bit disappointing or maybe a bit too premium. 
So, when it comes to my overall thoughts about this Duke of Hazard, I think he is a decent damage dealer, but suffers from a few problems that for some might be a deal breaker. You already saw that if you build him with a hyper carry team in mind, he can put out the numbers, but some problems, such as him losing the enhanced basic attacks if he goes below 50% HP is annoying, and it means he needs a babysitter healer or shielder, and the healer also needs to be pretty specific in order for him to trigger that enhanced charge attack from his first passive. Also. I might talk about this more in a future video, but the first constellation upgrade just feels so unfair this time around. Not only does it change the way the first passive works, so now he can unleash his enhanced charge attack by just finishing the 5 hit combo with his normal attacks, but it also becomes much stronger, which means way better melts. This also means strong healers like Baiju, Benny and Cookie no longer hamper the annoying 60% HP limit, and it opens up to so many ways you can play him. I don't know, I might be too jaded after reviewing and building so many characters, but I feel like his charge attack and normal attacks should have been much more synergetic at C0. But for now, I actually really like Risley, and I'm happy we finally got a Cryo Catalyst, because now I can start my pilgrimage from Mondstadt to Inazuma. Anyway, thanks for watching the video, and thanks again to War Thunder. Make sure to download it for free by using my link in the description. It's available on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox, and you'll also get a body pillow pack that includes premium vehicles, a premium account, and your new favorite Ducky Makuta, which is only available for a limited time. Most importantly, you'll help support my channel. See you next time.